What if Martians came to our planet? What if a Mars rover brought back some unknown organism that began to reproduce and wipe out all life on Earth? Well, we've seen this scenario hundreds of times in movies and read about it in books. But in reality, the situation is the opposite. We are the threat. Humans are the ones that could infect another planet. We are the ones that could become the destroyers of Mars. And to prevent that from happening, countries created an international agreement that forbids us from taking certain actions on our red neighbor in space. It sounds like science fiction, but it's real. This agreement is called the Outer Space Treaty. It was signed in 1967 by the Soviet Union, the United States, and the United Kingdom. The treaty states that no country that signs it can claim sovereignty over any celestial body. It also contains many other important rules, but one of them directly addresses how we should search for extraterrestrial life. Now, there's a possibility that certain regions on Mars could potentially host life. However, according to the Outer Space Treaty, exploring these so-called special regions is prohibited. That sounds strange, doesn't it? Searching for life on Mars is one of the main goals of the entire space industry. So how can these areas be off-limits? Well, the reason is contamination. When we explore these regions, we might accidentally bring life there. A tiny but extremely resilient microbe or bacterium could hitch a ride on a spacecraft, land on Mars, and begin to reproduce. But scientists are not only afraid that Earth's bacteria will destroy Martian life, there's a possibility that these two types of bacteria will mix, and we will not be able to separate one from the other. But what if it occurs that these bacteria were originally from Earth? Imagine NASA spending billions of dollars collecting samples of Martian soil, where life has been detected. The spacecraft brings these samples back to Earth. Scientists analyze them and suddenly realize that these Martian bacteria are actually ours. They had arrived on Mars 10 years earlier, when a robotic rover was simply taking pictures of the Martian landscape. Here on Earth, we already know bacteria that can survive extreme pressure, incredibly low and high temperatures, and even the complete absence of oxygen. For such organisms, adapting to Mars conditions might not be that difficult. But what if they change in that environment? What if they mutate and take on new forms? Scientists might believe they've discovered true alien life, when in reality, it's just Earth microbes that evolved on Mars. There's also a chance that Martian microorganisms could mix with Earth bacteria, making it impossible to separate them. In short, exploring places where life might exist could create massive scientific confusion. And what if contaminating Mars with Earth's life causes it to spread rapidly? What forms would that life take under conditions completely different from Earth's. Mars and the Moon can be explored, but it must be done with extreme caution to avoid biological pollution. And don't worry, the Outer Space Treaty also requires us to be careful not to bring potentially harmful Martian life back to Earth. So, what exactly are these special regions on Mars? Well, they're places where conditions might allow microorganisms to survive, which are warm and wet spots. But here's the ironic part. We currently don't know locations on Mars that meet these criteria. But if there are such places, we can't reach them. So in practice, this law about special regions hasn't really been tested yet. However, scientists also talk about uncertain regions. These are areas that could potentially be classified as special regions after further study. One example is recurring slope linea, or RSL. These are dark, narrow streaks that appear seasonally on Martian slopes. At first, scientists believed these streaks were signs of liquid water. Later studies showed that RSL are formed by dry granular flows. So does that mean there's no chance of finding life on Mars anytime soon? Perhaps. But what about all those headlines claiming that water was found on Mars? Couldn't that mean life exists there? Yes, scientists have discovered water. And it's not just small amounts, but entire oceans. The problem is that this water is buried 7 to 12 miles beneath the Martian surface. For comparison, the deepest hole ever drilled on Earth, the Kola Superdeep Borehole, is about 7.5 miles deep. 
we couldn't drill deeper on our own planet. Now imagine how much time, money, energy, and technology would be required to make a giant pit on Mars. For now, such a mission sounds more like sci-fi than reality. But let's say we do find a microbe on Mars and bring it back to Earth. What kind of danger could such a tiny organism pose? Well, science fiction thrillers give us dramatic answers, but there's also a real-world example. Take the fungus known as chytrid. This microscopic organism reduced populations of frogs, salamanders, and other amphibians across the globe. And this biological disaster affected humans as well. Chytrid is not an alien organism, but its story perfectly illustrates what can happen after even a small biological contamination. When chytrid infects a frog, it causes a severe disease. The fungus attacks the animal's skin, disrupting its ability to regulate water and electrolytes. Electrolytes are salts and minerals essential for biological functions. When this system breaks, it leads to heart failure. The frog doesn't survive, and the fungus continues to multiply and infect other creatures. The outbreak was first detected in northwestern Costa Rica in the early 1980s. From there, it spread south and east, reaching Panama in the 2000s. More recent research suggests that chytrid originated in East Asia and spread worldwide through the pet trade. How it evolved the ability to devastate amphibians is a story for another video. For now, let's focus on the consequences that still affect us even today. Over several decades, the chytrid epidemic caused massive declines in amphibian populations worldwide. Around 90 species disappeared entirely. The impact was especially severe in Costa Rica and Panama. As amphibian numbers dropped, so did the populations of predators that fed on frogs and salamanders. But that wasn't the main problem. Remember what frogs like to eat? They catch mosquitoes and various bugs. So after the fungus pandemic, the insect population increased dramatically. Now think about what is dangerous about mosquitoes. Yes, they bite and leave an itchy mark on your skin. But some species carry dangerous infections, such as malaria. As frog populations decreased, malaria cases among humans increased. Studies show that infection rates began rising about a year after amphibian decline started. Over the next three years, the number of malaria cases rose, but then stabilized. About eight years after the chytrid outbreak began, malaria rates started to decline and eventually returned to previous levels. Does that mean frog populations recovered? Unfortunately, no. Amphibians are still struggling. It's possible that humans simply took stronger preventative measures against malaria, or perhaps other animals began feeding on mosquitoes. Either way, the ecosystem never fully returned to its original balance. This is the core problem with biological contamination. Damaging one species disrupts an entire system. Like a chain reaction, problems spread from one link to the next. If a simple fungus managed to affect life on Earth where humans can fight epidemics, imagine what a microbe could do on Mars. Even if life exists there, a single Earth organism could wipe it out completely. The reverse is also true. A Martian microbe could cause serious problems on Earth. Imagine a spacecraft returning from Mars and landing in the ocean. A Martian microbe jumps into the water and attaches itself to a shark. The shark begins to change into something terrifying and starts attacking other sea creatures. Fish become more aggressive and begin attacking anything that moves in the water. Mars's bacteria is multiplying. The fish becomes unsuitable for food. Fishing industry suffers losses, and many people begin to experience hunger without fish. Marine mammals disappear, and things get worse and worse. Okay, let's not be so dramatic, but you get the idea. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.